Okay, this is take three. Episode 10. I got you, Dale. <laughs> I got him. Good day. Welcome back. And happy Halloween, everybody. Before we get started, though, I would like to just ask that you please pardon our mess. You can see spiders have taken over our plants here, the desk, my cups. We didn't have a show last week, and it seems that our cleaning staff quit. So please, pardon the mess. You're watching The Good News Is. I'm Michael Newsman, anchorman for this station. Until November 2nd, you can also see me as Jerry, the drunken murderous meat butcher at the Myers Residence, a haunted house and corn maze in North Platte, Nebraska. We have reached a milestone moment here at The Good News Is. This is our 10th episode, believe it or not. To commemorate such a landmark achievement, I have placed 10 candy corns on my desk, right here. These are Cane's Candy Corns, the Hallmark Halloween Sweet, and today's sponsor of the broadcast. That's Cane's Candy Corns, with a K, abbreviated as KKK. You guys didn't notice that before you made them our sponsor? Anyway, Halloween is our favorite time of year at The Good News Is. It is fitting that our featured story is centered on a man who has his place cemented in Halloween history. In this exclusive, nowhere else will it be seen interview, I sit down with Michael Myers, reclusive mass murderer and longtime personal friend of mine, as well as once near victim of his. He terrorized families in the town of Haddonfield, Illinois, and was the subject of several biographical films released from the late 70s to the early 2000s. We'll get to it shortly right after the commercial. Stay right here. I scared you, didn't I? I knew I was going to get you. They told me to do that. Everybody was in on it, except you. And you know, I, I kind of figured that you, you deserved it a little bit because the way you've been running the station, we've been having technical problems every every episode. I'm amazed we're still on the air. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hi, Norm. Oh, we're not doing a commercial. Okay. Well, then just pick me up the, uh, the haggis and the, uh, the blood pudding. Oh, and don't forget the, uh, the eyeball. Tell them to put the eyeball on top. Yeah. Well, it seems that we will not be doing a commercial this week. So, back to the story. Michael Myers was more than willing to do the interview for a friend, and I come out swinging with the tough questions. This would be called what is considered a no-holds-barred interview. His one condition, he refused to appear on camera. Although, if he had appeared on camera, I'd be willing to bet a lot of money that we'd be unable to show it due to technical problems anyway. I ask Michael, the first question, what happened with Halloween 3? Why weren't you in it? He says to me, begin quote, I tried to be. I was supposed to be. The producers couldn't wait for me. How was I supposed to get to Santa Mira, California from Haddonfield, Illinois? I was recovering in a burn unit at an Illinois hospital because of that insane bald man who tried to blow us up. He always insisted he was my doctor. I've never met him. And then Hollywood decided Halloween was about the children in 82, making them the stars. Screw the children and screw Silver Shamrock novelties and that damn Connell Cochran. They all got what they deserved. End quote. I wasn't afraid to mention the time Michael had a knife inches away from my chest. Michael explains, begin quote, I have always said I'm sorry to you. 
Sometimes my anger takes over and I get a little out of control. It happens to us all. The truth is, you're my best friend. We are good friends. Just don't push my buttons. You know, there are two subjects never to be brought up with me unless you want trouble. Number one, any surviving family of mine. And number two, any sexually active teenagers. End quote. The interview went on and I mentioned to Michael that he killed a very good friend of mine in 1989, Tina Williams. I attended the Tower Farm party with Tina and knew her for many years. Our relationship was not explored in the subsequent film. All they wanted to talk about was Rachel. An unknown actor portrayed me in an uncredited role. Michael tells me on a scale of 1 to 10, he sets his remorse at a 2 regarding Tina's murder, which truly tells me how much he sincerely regrets it. That'll do it for The Good News Is. Hear more of our interview at Michael Myers. Thanks for watching, and remember, no matter what the meteorologist says, it's up to you to make your day a bright one. Goodbye.